By about 2007 to 2009, Cisco Systems owned the Ethernet switch market with their proprietary iOS. About 86% of the market share was owned by Cisco Systems. About that time, a number of universities began to explore the idea of an open source switch operating system. That began SDN. Now let's face it, there's a lot of vendors working on SDN. The problem is a lot of it, if you go to their home pages, almost any one of these vendors will have something about SDN. Much of it is proprietary, although most of these vendors are working with organizations to develop open source versions and platforms of SDN. Let's first understand what is SDN, and then we'll look at what is open source and what is proprietary. One of the major goals of SDN is to allow a simple interface to this complex data center so that the data center's network operators can see clearly what's going on with the network of that data center. Application developers of that data center can clearly see what's going on and what do they need to do. Security and monitoring of that data center can be clearly seen by a clear view of the data center as a whole. As well as, as you can see here, I've got an interface for for the tenant. I purchase resources from this data center. I can see my Gmail, its impact on what I am purchasing. I see my MS Teams, the network activity of that particular application. I see my HTTP2 traffic. I can see my Google Apps. It gives me a clear, as a tenant of that data center, also a clear view of what's going on. To better understand what SDN is, let's use an analogy. SDH, Software Defined Hardware. You use it every day. Software Defined Hardware. Well, let's say you bought this motherboard and you take it and you install Windows. Now you have a Windows PC. Take that same motherboard and you install Linux. Now you got a Linux box. Take that same hardware, you install BSD and now you've got a Unix-like operating system on it. Or Take that same hardware and you put Chrome OS on it. The hardware is really a neutral platform. It's the software you install that define what it is. We're seeing this same thing in networking. Instead of Cisco specialized hardware, the iOS, the specialized applications that can only run from Cisco, now we're going to take white box switches, put in a variety of different operating systems on those white box switches, run the applications that we want, and in many cases, they're going to be open source applications. The beginning of SDN. Now SDN is not just for data centers that are running cloud applications. It can be used by mobile providers using LTE and 5G. This is big WAN edge routing and security for enterprises, IoT services, if that's what you're using it for, and of course, analytics and insight. Who's impacted by software-defined networking? 5G and 4G mobile carriers. This is a market that's been so proprietary in the past, but because of the cost and the need to roll out really effective 5G, 5G carriers are really looking hard for the first time at white box hardware and open source software. Broadband providers also are looking at SDN, enterprises. Data centers have really been the driving force for SDN development. Now we're looking at optical transport network companies provide us that long haul network connectivity. So Open Network Foundation is one of the main organizations that's really pushing and developing a lot of the foundation and framework for SDN. Now this is a great slide because it allows us to look at SDN from all kinds of angles. Start with by moving over to the left, what looks like like an OSI layer, go to the bottom where you see the disaggregated hardware. The closer you go to the bottom on the left-hand side, the more you're touching hardware. Open box switches, open box routers, firewalls, IoT devices, all the hardware is down at the bottom. As we start moving up, we see our operating systems. These are our Linux operating systems that are running on these various types of hardware. Network control, I'll get into that. That's a whole subject into itself. But look at software above the network control cloud virtual management, orchestration management policies, network data analytics, and application layer. Now that layer, those boxes give us a big picture of what's happening with SDN. Now move to the center. We're seeing all the various type of open source projects that are being run by the Linux Foundation that are connecting to these various layers over here on the left. 
On the right-hand side are all the standard bodies. You have IEEE. You have Cable Labs, which does a lot of the standards for broadband. You have 3GPP, which is your mobile carrier standards body. You have the Internet Engineering Task Force. You've got ITU, International Telecommunications Union. Right-hand side, we have the standards bodies. On the left-hand side, we have the overall flow of development. In the center, we have the open source projects that are connecting to the these various modules that make up SDN. Now let's take a look at Azure. Azure is proprietary, but even the big proprietary SDN implementations are plugging in open source components. For example, on the left-hand side, you see data center hardware. You see Sonic and SmartNIC field programmable gate arrays. Microsoft actually developed Sonic, which is an open source switch operating system. It is now one of the most popular switch operating systems in the world today, over 4 million million ports. So even though Azure is proprietary, SDN, it does have components that are open source. Now carriers are some of the most proprietary companies in the world, but they are seriously looking at software-defined WAN controls. This is a proof of concept diagram that's being run right now by multi-vendor software-defined WAN services on top of white box hardware. In understanding SDN, what are the major paradigm shifts that SDN is bringing to networking that were not true of the past? Number Number one, APIs versus command line. If you're an IT pro and you've been in the business for any length of time, you've configured switches, routers, firewalls, VPNs, most of the time using either a web interface or a command line. Complex configurations is a real problem with network gear. If you've done firewall configurations with some proprietary operating system or a proprietary VPN server or edge routers or enterprise switches, you know how complex this is. It slows your network as it begins to scale, configurations can be tedious and mistakes often happen. With all this proprietary equipment in your network, it's very difficult to see a clear vision of the entire network, which makes you very vulnerable to security risks. What SDN is going to do is bring in APIs, software development APIs, rather than command line to configure your network. Now, we're not going to get rid of the complexity at the hardware level. But what we're going to do is bring in savvy developers with alongside savvy network engineers that can help us develop APIs so that software on demand can make changes to our router switches firewalls based on their needs. So look at this diagram. This is SDN. Notice in the center, we have an SDN controller. Above it, we're going to have various business applications. You could have Kubernetes. You could have container orchestrations that can then talk to your SDN controller. And impact below is your network devices, switches, routers, firewalls, and configure them through various APIs. So now applications can communicate with an SDN controller, which can configure those switches, routers, almost at real time. So here we see our SDN controller, and notice the red arrows going down to the switches. That's what we call our control plane. And if you'll notice a dark blue line going through our switches, that's our network traffic. That's controlled our data plane. Now, jumping from the model we just saw to an implementation of SDN security, we can see our hardware down below. We've got taps that we can plug in, look at our switches, our routers, our file servers. We can also plug into our next generation firewalls, send metrics, and and information up to applications such as Network Analyzers, Wireshark, IDS, and Forensics, giving us a clear view of what's happening in our data center. Now, SDN is based on two sets of APIs. Our northbound APIs are used to provide applications to talk to the network, our SDN controller. Southbound APIs are your application pro programming interfaces that talk to your switches, routers, firewalls. So let's take a look at the second paradigm shift that SDN brings to our network. It is high-speed router and switch configuration change. Now, most people, when they make configuration changes to their home routers and switches, usually happens when they buy a new one. So it could be at home, you change your router and switch configuration uh, when you replace your router every two to five years. So that's not changing very much or very fast. 
in the same situation, a small business and rent pays may change their switch configuration maybe once a year if they are lucky, maybe a router more often, but not, not that much. But in a data center and in an enterprise, you may need to change switches and router configuration by changes per second. SDN is going to allow applications and services to make router and switch changes at a per second basis. When you have a tenant that spins up a whole new set of containers and virtual machines for a brand new application they're launching, all the virtual networks have to be set up and can be set up in milliseconds. The third major paradigm shift that SDN brings to networking is open source switch router operating systems and white box hardware. Data centers were bound by proprietary hardware and proprietary operating systems, and they demanded a change to lower the cost and give them greater flexibility. The Open Compute Project was a collaboration of Facebook, Google, you name the name of a data center manager, and they were involved in the Open Compute Project. They set new standards for hardware, non-proprietary hardware. Open source switch software could be run on them. Open source router software could be run on them. We're beginning to force all these proprietary vendors to reevaluate their hardware. The Open Compute standards allowed manufacturers who made bare metal switches and white box switches to compete in the data center space. Companies like Edgecore, Delta, APS, Invitec, and QCT. This is a QCT white box bare metal spine switch. If you've seen my video on what is a Tor switch, you'll understand exactly what this is. This is a beast of a switch. Many branded switch vendors begin to sell what they call bright boxes or branded white boxes. So you can put open flow operating system on them, open network environment on them. You can put the open network Linux software on it. You can run a variety of open source operating systems on these branded white boxes. So some brands that make switch hardware, such as Lenovo Think Systems, Dell EMC series of switches, Edgecore, D-Link, Netgear, all sell branded hardware. You can put many different operating systems on their switches. Most of the manufacturers that make bare metal hardware for data centers use a firmware called ONIE. It basically is an open source firmware, much like UEFI does for your PC hardware. It boots the system up, then you can install the operating system system of choice. When vendors design their hardware, their choice of ASIC chips pretty much determines the type of open source operating system that can be used. This particular switch boots with the ONIE environment. It's called the Open Network Install Environment, allowing the owner to install a compatible network operating system on it. Now this is a great picture of SDN. Notice the network OS. This is where your SDN controller is. And notice its control. Obviously, it controls all the physical switches, the Tor switches, the top of rack switches, the spine switches. But look, it even controls, if you've got Windows Server, it's actually communicating to the Hyper-V switch. If you're running Linux, the KVM switch. If you're running Citrix, it's the Zen switch. It controls all the network from one end to the other and has visibility and control of not only the physical switches and the data center, but all the Hyper-V switches. In a Microsoft environment, who talks to the, the SDN controller? Well, applications like Windows Admin Center, System Center Virtual Machine Manager, even PowerShell can talk to the SDN controller. Now, Microsoft provides an SDN solution to people that own Windows Server. So how does it do it? Well, first of all, every server that runs Hyper-V installs a service known as SDN Host Agent. Then you take a virtual machine and you spin up either server 2016, 2019, 2022, and you add a server role called Network Controller. Now you have SDN. You can do this in a domain or a non-domain environment. Now, most SDN implementations are both an open source and proprietary element for their SDN solution. Now, there are also totally proprietary SDN offerings. Cisco has application-centric infrastructure. Cisco DNA Center. IBM offers cloud internet services. Juniper offers a complete proprietary SDN solution. Cradlepoint, Sienna, VMware, HPE, Nokia, Arista, and Dell all offer a complete proprietary SDN offering. So, in summary, SDN is typically both open source and proprietary. Many 
vendors offer a completely proprietary solution for SDN. SDN brings three major changes to managing network. API control of the network rather than command line. Switch and router configurations that can change in milliseconds. Move to non-proprietary hardware and open source operating systems. SDN simply allows more comprehensive view of our data center for tenants, operators, security teams, and developers.